You ever known anyone that could take something off the internet? Watch out with your dick pics, kid. <laughs> <laughs> They say rock and roll is for life. But what happens when one of the wildest, most charismatic rockers in the game hits 40? When he's had all the sex, drugs, and rock and roll there is to have, what does he turn to? This is the most scary fucking, this is the most scary thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Hi, I'm Boots Electric. Uh, I'm from a band called the Eagles of Death Metal. You're watching Back and Forth on Noisy. And I'm the Cookie Monster. And this is the Eagles of Death Metal, Back and Forth. <sighs> Do you remember our first gig? It was at the Chinese place that was the Mexican salsa bar that was right next to Shakey's Pizza and Carl's Jr. When someone says Shakey's Pizza, don't you just go, Yeah. here's your pizza? Like, why would you call a place Shakey's the pizza? Yeah, like, has yeah. the dude like got a disease or is he an alcoholic yeah. always in a constant state of withdrawal? Like, come on down to Scabby's Taco. <laughs> <laughs> it's no bueno. When you first heard the word thesaurus, did you think it was a dinosaur? I did. And I was like, thesaurus rex, I want to see this beast. It must be a really smart dinosaur. Do you think having little arms means that you can't be a good hugger? It must be certainly true of the Tyrannosaurus rex. You're coming in for it. Like, how would you hug if you were a Tyrannosaur, like? Where you're like, I got it. <laughs> yeah, like, let me get that. <laughs> Joshua and I have known we were gonna make this album for years. If we were drug dealers, we would be the drug dealer that you would overdose every time you bought our drugs because it would be that good, TG. So that's like the standard we have for music. But really, since I'm only stealing from the best albums ever made, technically I always write the greatest albums of all time. Do you remember your first recording session? Like, as I remember mine, mine was with you. Was it really? Yeah, mine was with you at Monkey. That was my first recording session. I, I was like 14 and there was someone, we opened a closet door and there was just someone in there who was like. <laughs> and then you shut it and you're like, that was weird. <laughs> Our new album, Zipper Down, why, why is it frustrating for you? It's frustrating when you have a, you know, when you make something that sounds like it's got a dick bigger than John Holmes. Yeah. And it's frustrating because you know the ear holes are really small. Yeah. And I'm frustrated because I really want to jam every square inch of that record into their ear hole. I see. And I'm already frustrated because I know it's like almost just based on physics. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. I can see where that really brings you down. Should I be going like... Or just... No, 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 the first way. Okay. That, it sounds majestic and cool. Okay, one more time. It's the fourth album, so it's the combination of all my experience, all the tricks I've learned, and an attempt to demonstrate our genius. So this one's filled with nothing but hits. Boner rockers. Don't you patronize me, motherfucker. I actually, I wanted to ask you, what do you think the most frustrating thing about the music industry is? Is there something that's most frustrating? I just like to play, and, so, and there's no advice that can help right. for, for doing some of this weird shit. You just get stuck in it and you go. Like bridge? Like the bridge club. <laughs> and you know, you know, you just get stuck in some of this and you don't know what to do, because it's sometimes really odd. And I like I don't like to pretend. I'll and play the music with, industry kind of it kind of insists that you pretend a lot. Well, of if I'm not happy, then I don't want to have to be happy. And if I'm happy, I want to be happy. And I and so I don't know. I, I'm not very good at pretending. You know that that part of it is a little weird. Do you ever get starstruck? Starstruck for me is mostly just a really big desire to want to meet them. On occasion, I've had my heart broken by meeting my heroes, and they've been really awful or. Feeling, I does get it a, make it if you, that's happened? Like, does it make it so you can't listen to their? Music it does. Or, it, yeah. it absolutely. Like, I have a hard time listening to Michael Jackson songs. But some things are just more surreal, where you've seen somebody so many times, 
like in a television set. Go like, back in the TV. Your head needs to be a lot smaller. You don't belong here. You know? What are you doing here? Yeah. Let me see your papers. Yeah. But the ones that are really beautiful are like when you're standing on stage playing and you look over and Iggy Pop is hiding in between the speakers like when we played with the Stooges. We're, first of all, we're, we're playing the show and when the damned opened for us, I was freaking out, you know. And I look over and Iggy Pop is watching me play and he looked at me and he went like this. That's, that's like winning an award. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That, that, and that's only for me because no one else saw that and you wouldn't have known it if I didn't tell you right now. You know? Iggy is a good example of just someone that I was like, damn, I want to meet, I want to, you know, meet Iggy and see how that. And I hope it's like a, I thought it would be. You yeah, know I mean? yeah, you, you kind of go like. It's the same way with like John Paul Jones. When yeah. I came into the studio when you were recording with him, I was yeah, he awesome. truly nervous and I don't normally get nervous like that but I, I didn't want to seem stupid and I'm also one of the dudes I, don't, I know that just because you like someone doesn't really mean that they give a shit about it you know and, sure. and they shouldn't well but they can't know what that means like yeah. I watched a lot of people that I'd known for years meet Jones and just be like hub and just yeah. over and over and over wherever we went you know because we when you work in close quarters like he's such a lovely person and he is a sweet and precious guy, and I was just sitting there wanting to watch him be sweet and precious, and that's got to be the most awful thing. For yeah, where you, I've seen Jones talk to someone, and then he'll turn away, and then that person turns and yeah. high fives a stranger. You know? Yeah, exactly. some, you know, and, and when you high five a stranger and they're not ready, sometimes they go, oh, and <laughs> yeah. they just have to sort of receive it. I've only asked for an autograph uh, one time. I asked for Tracy Lord's autograph when I was when the I was only autograph. When, when I went with you to uh, uh, Lollapalooza, I don't know if you remember, but I hid in the autograph line when you guys finished your Q&A and I was in the autograph. That's one of the, and I remember you were like. It's one of the only autographs I've denied. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Well, you were like, sign these, and then you whipped out your breasticles. I've seen Joshua just sitting at a bar. It must be difficult for you. And someone will just be standing like this close, like he's not, like he has nothing to do, and just taking a picture of him. It's like. That must be strange too. Dude, I love that. Awesome. <laughs> to get a flash photo and then you turn and someone's gone. <laughs> you know, it's, I love that shit, it's awesome. We're as gay as you can be without sucking each other's dicks. So you were followed around by a film crew for, yeah. for a year. What's that like? Well, I'm very vain, so I like to be photographed. So that lent itself to it in a way. Like I figured that, that in a way that that would be something you're like, hell yeah. I and, actually, but then other I times, got up earlier than I would yeah. normally have gotten up because I'm going to be filmed today. It was like every day. But, I, I love that about you though, that you're, you have such an enthusiasm for um, yourself. Well, I'm sweet. You are, you're amazing. And, and I was also fortunate to have developed a friendship with the crew, so it wasn't as difficult as it would have been like having you know, someone up your ass all day long. Well, but they say like in a science experiment, that if the subject knows it's being, you know, then you can't be normal, but did right. you find like after for so long of a period, is it just normal? Just well, that's the weirdest question. There were, I was experiencing things in my life that were really quite heavy, you know. But there was also all, all this, this planning and stuff going on. There was a moment where there were a couple moments where there was the camera there and I had to deal with some shit now. I mean, I'm a killing rock and rape and roll rebel. That's a fact. I'm not trying to hide that. It's never affected my parenting. I have absolute rules. I've lived my, demonstrated every aspect of my professional life. Even. I'm in my head on this shit every day. And sometimes I really feel like I can't breathe. Like I don't want if I think about it or if I move or if anyone sees my face, if anyone sees me, they'll know. Well, and you would ask me on occasion, like, what's this like? You, you had some sincere, like, I'm just curious, I'm always, like, what the hell is this like? I'm like, I feel protective of you and you know and I love you and so watching it sometimes it's like are you cool with this microscope up your butt <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. do you want me to deep butt the scope that would be you, awesome you know? well if I ever see that I'll just naturally yank it out but there's I, some dark shit about me that you're gonna see and we'll show that just 
be sweet to me about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess that. I guess that's why I had my own reservations. It's got some ugliness in it. It's got some of the hardness. You know, rock and roll. There's a consequence. There's a penalty. And I'm also one. I don't really like to display losses. I always like to show this is what I've won. Sure. You know, never let them see you sweat. And and there's a moment in that film too where you're able to peep into my losses. Yeah. And that was that was the fucking hardest part. Art doesn't get even remotely worth it until it's vulnerable enough to like show you something. For whatever cliched corny reason, whenever we produce, I mean, I mean, I think as an artist, you're trying to do something different, or you know, you're trying to do something yeah. that isn't the standard. I, and I think that's what makes this yeah. different. There's a nugget that you get to in this movie that's hard. Everybody should have my drug problem. It's been a good night, no one's died. God made men and women. Sam Colt made them equal. That's just the fucking reality of life. I don't think we can get any more weird. <laughs> just wearing it when you're a rocker can make it seem like you're making fun of it, which I'm not. It's a demonstration of personal humility. Well, anyway, back to buttholes.